fresh viewpoint and you you make changes but broad changes have seldom occurred the master plan remains the same the structure broadly remains the same but dialogue is improvised actions are improvised but character the basic characters hardly ever change you know they they are fairly well set beforehand uh, environments have played a very large and significant part in your films and in certain cases you have made the environments <laughs> yourself in other cases you have found out environments chosen environments and work there but all through you have paid a very great attention to the fact of the environment the reality the impact of the environment uh, how have you uh, actually tried to build your environments gone out of your uh, starting from a story starting from a theme and making a choice of your environment you have not been controlled or limited I have noticed uh, within any rigid law no. that you would work only in exteriors or only in the studio no for instance when my like, there are certain things that are dictated by circumstances for instance when one makes a film about contemporary Calcutta one would one should ideally shoot on location in actual interiors and this is this is something which happens in uh, abroad all the time because nowadays for instance the new wave people all the French uh, directors they have practically stopped building sets they all work on location in actual interiors apartment interiors out in the streets but the environment there is different here shooting on location in a city urban location is can be hell absolutely I have had this experience many many times but streets we cannot build in the studio so we have willy-nilly to shoot in the streets no matter how many thousands of people uh, gather to watch and get in the way of your work but interiors I find because in order to avoid the problem uh, the, the problem of dubbing of post synchronizing the dialogue which I always find is a very mechanical process I prefer to build interiors in the studio because I think I have sufficiently imaginative and clever art directors who will be able to simulate reality and I have a sufficiently intelligent and um, uh, mature cameraman to simulate actual light, right lighting uh, available lighting and uh, our interior studio interiors have fooled uh, many of the best foreign critics I have spoken to them they can hardly ever make out which is which is actual set or which is actual interior so this has been the case and uh, this is as I told you this is dictated by circumstances but if a film is laid entirely on location like for instance Kanchenjunga which was planned to be shot in Darjeeling uh, entirely outdoors taking into account the changes of weather that takes place in Darjeeling and the whole story I spent a few uh, a fortnight or so there and observed how the weather keeps changing there and the whole story was planned to take into account of rising mists, mists disappearing and the sun coming out, the clouds covering the sun and the gradual uh, falling of light from four o'clock to six o'clock which is the running time of the film. And the, even the changes of moods and the changes of well, the were mood, related. The changes of moods. That this was a very things. special type of film, where the changes of mood uh, were dictated by the changes of actual atmospheric conditions. And I think partly the same uh, method was used also in Arun Din Ratri, which is a similar film. You know, from that point of view, uh, handful which of has characters. Spirit of the location yes, also yes. working within the film. Yes. Uh, when you go to work in Rajasthan, for example, you've worked on a number of your films there two by now, them, yes. two of them. Uh, what were the special problems you faced there? It's another kind of situation entirely. But Rajasthan, for instance, if you're working in a city like Jodhpur, as we did in Shonarkella, the same problem as in Calcutta we had to face with a crowd. Uh, the crowd who not only want uh, to watch the shooting, but they want to be in the shots you see that's the main trouble if they w would sit, stand back and watch then we can work the, the, their main uh, tendency is to get in the ray within the range of the camera and that creates problems that we had the same problem in Jodhpur 
But shooting in, for instance, in Bikaneer, or certainly in Jaisalmer, was very, very simple from that point of view. Or in the middle of a desert. It's like shooting in the studio. You have everything under control. You take your extras and you shoot, and the light, you judge the light beforehand, you watch the behavior of the sun beforehand, and arrive on time and shoot and come back. That's that. Uh, apart from these uh, very special occasions, like Rajasthan or like the hill station, Kanchanjunga, a large number of your films have been based and rooted, in a sense, in this city. Mm -hmm. uh, and this city has appeared in various shapes, in various moods, in various uh, situations mm -hmm. back in the 19th century, right down in the 70s of the 20th century. Uh, almost a history of the city uh, yeah. grows through your films. Mm -hmm. Uh, have you any special attachment to the city, or uh, how does this city appear so well, very often in your films? Well, Calcutta has appeared largely in the, uh, predominantly in contemporary urban stories, with the exception, perhaps, of Charulata, which was uh, a 19th century, mid-19th century. Calcutta keeps, I mean, Calcutta is endlessly fascinating, and since I was born in brought up here. It remains uh, a constant oh, yeah. source of fascination. But again, uh, I find the idea of uh, making more and more, making contemporary urban subjects, particularly if it's, uh, if they're laid in Calcutta, a bit daunting because of the problems that I told you. So one goes back uh, to the 18th century, maybe once in a while, where one doesn't have to contend with the traffic and the kind of uh, public that uh, gets in the way of uh, satisfactory work. So it's that, but then, uh, as you know, I have also departed from Calcutta once in a while and uh, moved elsewhere, not just in time, but also in setting. Uh, you have been one of the major filmmakers who have returned to making short films again and again. Uh, short films or not so short non-fictional or non-feature films. Uh, do you find any special uh, excitement or special sustenance in making films like this? More scope for experimentation, more scope for doing something more to your heart? Short story, f uh, short story, uh, short films have been uh, usually of two kinds, you know. I mean, I have actually filmed short story and kept the films short, like the first in Dinkonna and the second the in Ma Mahapurush, Kapurush. And I also made a two-reeler uh, called Two for television, which was written especially for the for television, for the screen. But I have also made uh, a number of documentaries. Now, I, I think of myself primarily as a, a storyteller, as a maker of fiction films. But I have, uh, on occasions, on the occasions when I uh, made documentaries, they were on subjects which, which fascinated me, which really drew me, uh, which uh, inspired me, let us say. First, there was a film on Rabindranath for the centenary, and the film on Binod Bihari Mukherjee, who was my art teacher in Shantaniketan. A remarkable man, as well as a remarkable painter, and um, a film on Bala Saraswati, which was a tribute to a great dancer. But I would like to make more short story films. There's no question of that, because we do have a very rich fund of uh, filmable short, short stories, stories, which should not be expanded. And uh, in the short story, perhaps a good idea would be to make, let us say, a collection of three short stories. One stood told very, uh, fairly conventionally, the long one, which comes at the end, but uh, on the other two, one could make experiments, because it's difficult to make experiments on a large scale with a, in a big film, because the audience, I'm afraid, remains uh, still pretty backward, judging by the success of some of the recent uh, films. Uh, have you noticed any uh, improvement in general in the state of the audience and the approach of the audience? Certain things that you might not have dared do in the past which you think would be accepted by the audience now oh, yes. you'd like I, to do? I definitely think that an audience has certainly grown in Calcutta and the uh, near sort of suburban places, which are the big towns. There, I, I personally feel that I have, an, I have a ready audience for almost any kind of film that I make. Anything that I make will have a six-week run, let us say, playing in three theatres. 
and this obviously reflects a growing interest in my work and since my work itself has changed over the years for instance ah in protodendy i tried out all sorts of narrative devices even in john oram and i tried a very sort of ruthless kind of approach a very ah a cynical almost approach very stark approach very stark stark approach which worked which went down very well and i'm very very optimistic about the state of the audience here there's no question although the fact remains that some very very old fashioned films are still very very successful i think a departure also ah something new which also at the same time tells ah a story ah a significant story let us say in a comprehensible where the communication is effective should do well ah so what are the dangers or what are the hindrances that you face now if you think that the audience has improved well as i told you mainly technical it's mainly technical i think because we can't use black and white anymore honestly the black and white is in a very poor state at the moment because of the stock situation we have to make films in color we have to think in those terms now and color dictates a bigger market because color is much more costly and uh, when you think of a bigger market uh, you can't uh, just think of bengali anymore which is the reason why i have just made a hindi film uh uh now with this hindi film do you expect that it will make a real breakthrough and a dent into the large massive indian audience that still remains generally unresponsive to the new indian cinema well it remains to be seen i don't think this is a film for the shole audience frankly no because it breaks new ground i think it's a i have used prem chand story which is a short short story uh where there is a mention of the political event in the background the annexation of out but i may 50% almost 50% of my film is concerned with the political event itself and the two things run parallel the short story prem chand's original to which i have stuck fairly closely i think and the political event which is it's like a b a b a b structure and at the end because uh, none of the characters from prem chand's story ever are directly involved in the political thing but at the end of the film uh, the the thematic link is very made very clear so that it becomes a, a unity and i don't think this this structure has ever been tried here before so it is in a sense an experimental film but it is also i think a simple film basically a simple film and it uses uh, some very well known and popular bang bombay actors who have done marvelous work i think i did in, i really did enjoy working with these actors and actresses so but one waits to see what will happen over these 25 years uh, you have worked on a wide wide variety of themes styles genres you have done children's films mm-hmm. fantasy films realistic films films based in the 19th century or even an 18th century situation mm-hmm. films right in the 70s the entire range do you still think you have other themes other genres that haunt you or excite you occasionally things that you would like to do in the future yes uh, there are a few things which haven't been done yet for instance i've always wanted to do an epic I have been fascinated by the Mahabharata and I'm still fascinated by Mahabharata but I don't think the whole of Mahabharata can be tackled so perhaps a segment of an epic a segment of Mahabharata at lu using our tradition of stylization perhaps using the kathakali I really haven't got a very clear notion of what I want to do but I definitely do want to do an epic a story which everybody knows from beforehand that is something which I want to do Something. what are the segments that have uh... well one is one i think one can make a film on the dice game itself just the dice game can make uh, an entire film the main problem with mahabharata is the the characters i mean one has if one thinks of an indian audience then there's no problem because everybody knows who karna is and who bhishma is etc but i'm afraid a film of this nature has to be planned for the world market mm. uh, and there the relationship of the characters 
the world yes, uh, create tremendous problems. And do. Tremendous mm -hmm. problem, because unless you address a person as uncle, for instance, at least three times, he's not uncle. I mean, you, mm -hmm. this is one of the things, one of the things that one learns over the years. That, and perhaps I would lo do, like to do a folk tale at some point. Very much I'd like to do a, an authentic folk tale, not uh, Gopi Gain, but an authentic folk tale, perhaps based on a Mormon Shingitika uh, ballad, in a very, very simple, very, very simple style with very, very few, little dialogue, but using, again, uh, Bengali folk forms. I'll continue to make children's films from time to time. That I know. I have decided to do that. And perhaps an English language film involving Indians. Because, you see, if you have uh, people of different provinces uh, getting together in a situation, English is the only lingo that they can use. And that kind of English language film, where in the, the language itself would be used creatively, maybe one person will be very difficult, uh, we're very sort of uh, unvocal because of his lack of command of the language. Another would be very fluent, another would use a certain strong Indian accent, that sort of a situation. I, it's still uh, very much at the back of my mind, but I don't know what. So there are still a few. You had a, you had a plan to do a science fiction film. Have yes, indeed. It? I was forgetting about that. That I would very much like to do, but again, again that is a question of resources, technical resources. Because now, uh, Kubrick's 2001 and a few other films made since then have set such a high standard. And have extended the horizons of science fiction to infinity. There's actually. no question of making that kind of a science fiction film here in Bengal. But the idea that I had uh, originally was more of a metaphysical sort of science fiction film does not, were not involving so much technical expertise and perfection. Perhaps I, oh, that, that is one thing I would love to do at some point. Uh, all these 25 years have been a uh, fascinating experience for all of us with your films and we hope more years of more creative and exciting adventure. Thank you very much. Thank you.